This module covers some of the attributes of easterly waves, including African easterly waves and the African easterly jet. Easterly waves are disturbances in the mean flow of low-level easterly flow in the tropics. Easterly waves are responsible for the formation of many tropical cyclones in the Atlantic and Pacific basins, and the precursors for a large majority of Category 3, or higher, hurricanes in the Atlantic. This is the first time we've seen a diagram like this. It is called a wave number frequency power spectrum diagram. The wave number is inversely proportional to wavelength. Low wave numbers correspond to low wave or long wavelengths, and the zonal wave number refers to the wavelength in the east-west direction only. A wave number 1, for example right here where the cursor is, means that a single pair of a trough and ridge in a wave can fit in the circumference of Earth. Wave number 6, just for, as an example, indicates that the wavelength is short enough so that six pairs of ridges and troughs can fit onto the circumference of the Earth at whatever latitude the wave is at. In this case, the frequency refers to the phase speed of the wave divided by the wavelength. A plot like this projects fields associated with precipitation, like outgoing long wave radiation, or OLR, onto wave number and frequency space, such that the dark shading, like this here, indicates pairs of wave number and wave frequency at which rainfall more often occurs in the tropics. Positive wave numbers on this plot indicate features that propagate eastward, and negative wave numbers are associated with western propagating rainfall. The Kelvin wave and MJO part of the spectrum are shown at low wave number and frequency. We'll discuss these later in the course. In the upper left of this plot is a broad shaded region labeled TD, which stands generically just for tropical disturbances. This increased power in this box represents westward propagating rainfall in the tropics. It has a wave frequency of about one quarter to one fifth of a cycle per day, which corresponds to a wave period of roughly two to four days. The high wave number corresponds to relatively small disturbances. A wave number minus 15, for example, corresponds with westward propagating disturbances separated by about 2,500 kilometers. Given a wave period of about 3 days, this corresponds with a phase speed of about 10 meters per second. Many of the disturbances that project onto this TD labeled wave number and frequency combination are easterly waves, many of which originate over sub-Saharan West Africa. These figures show the typical horizontal structure of easterly waves over the East and West Pacific. They are spatial regressions of OLR and 700 millibar stream function relative to a lag equals zero days, which occurred at the time that the OLR minimum in an easterly wave was located at a pre-selected point. So in this example, the pre-selected point is right here, and in the West Pacific, it's right here. In the East Pacific, that mi middle panel here represents a lag of zero days, and the OLR minimum that I just pointed out is at 10 north, 95 degrees west, or in between these red arrows. The dark shading indicates where positive anomalies of OLR, or lower than normal precipitation, was present at the same time. At the same time, also, the stream function indicates that the anomalous flow in the wave is cyclonic around the OLR minimum, but very importantly, it is tilted toward the northeast with latitude. A weak signal in OLR and stream function is present well downstream into the central Pacific as well. The different panels show how the pattern evolves in time relative to the zero time. Thus, the top panel shows the wave anomalies four days before the maximum OLR anomaly, and the bottom panel represents the same four days afterward. The OLR anomalies tend to propagate westward and poleward, while the stream function anomaly lessens in the Central Pacific. In the West Pacific, waves that propagate from the Central Pacific become highly amplified. 
The wave propagates toward the west near a latitude of 10 degrees north, which is represented by the gray shaded area that is aligned with the blue lines that connect the various panels. So this is a gray shaded area indicating uh, lower than normal LLR or higher than normal precipitation, and you can watch that from panel to panel propagate toward the west, and the same in the left panels as well. For the same regions, we can also look at the vertical structure of the wave at lag day zero. The top panels show the wave anomaly of OLR as a function of longitude. The OLR minima represent where active convection in an easterly wave is present. And for the left side, we're looking at the East Pacific, and for the right side, the West Pacific. The bottom three panels are vertical cross sections of anomalous meridional wind, temperature, and humidity at 10 degrees north. The darker solid lines, such as these in this plot, these in this middle plot, and this in the third plot, represent positive anomalies, and the lighter shaded dashed lines, like these over here, represent the negative anomalies. Some differences are seen between the East and West Pacific, but the basic structures are similar. The meridional wind anomaly, we'll just look here at the East Pacific to describe this, indicates that vorticity, positive relative vorticity, is present in the wave with a maximum vorticity in the middle troposphere. The maximum vorticity is a little lower in altitude in the West Pacific. The temperature anomalies are tilted with height, and the result is that a positive temperature anomaly is located aloft where the precipitation is present over a negative temperature anomaly. This type of vertical structure for temp temperature anomalies is quite common where deep convection occurs in the tropics. And it's associated with the adiabatic motions in the gravity wave response to the convective heating. The humidity anomaly at bottom is positive throughout the troposphere where the convection is occurring, with a maximum anomaly occurring between 700 and 850 millibars. Thus, the convectively active part of an easterly wave is an area of moist air and enhanced vorticity, which is favorable for tropical cyclone development. The nearby areas to the west and the east of the convective maximum are relatively cloud-free and dry, with opposite signed vorticity and temperature anomalies present as well. But in the East Pacific, you can see you know, downstream where there is another positive anomaly in humidity, for example, that may be another easterly wave. The track density of African easterly waves is shown here, with red colors indicating the highest frequency of occurrence. Easterly waves originate in a few locations in sub-Saharan Africa, often focused on topographical features that we will see on a map soon. They move generally westward and slightly poleward as they move across West Africa and into the Atlantic. Some of the easterly waves consolidate into tropical cyclones and move poleward, while those that do not tend to move westward into the East Pacific, where they often move toward the northwest eventually. Not all easterly waves are African easterly waves, however. They can also gener generate in the tropical North Pacific as well as near northwestern South America and the Panamanian Isthmus, as shown here. This is an area with one of the highest occurrences of mesoscale convective systems in the world. These waves also appear to be forced by topography in the region that produces a small region of vorticity here in the Panama Bight that can grow upscale. A combination of observations and reanalysis illustrates how a region of positive relative vorticity develops here and then amplifies, going from left to right and then down over, following the mouse, and then moves toward the northwest. The currently displayed enhanced Meteosat infrared satellite image alongside a water vapor absorption band shows several regions of enhanced convection over West Africa during a particularly active period. Each region of red, the convection, indicates low brightness temperatures or cold cloud tops, and each region is approximately located on the east side of a trough axis, which I've drawn in here, around 700 millibars that is associated with an easterly wave. What is shown here is a sequence of easterly waves that occur in fairly rapid succession. Note how the trough axis is tilted eastward with height. As we'll show soon, 
and particularly the next module, this is very important for amplification of the wave in an African easterly jet. A drawing of a single trough axis is offered here that reinforces what we just saw. A trough that is tilted eastward with latitude is usually strongest around 700 millibars and is accompanied by convergence upstream of the trough axis and divergence downstream. Therefore, the deepest convection occurs upstream of the trough axis. The orientation of this trough axis, the tilt, is going to end up being really important for the barotropic conversion uh, into eddy kinetic energy in the wave. This topographic map of Africa depicts high elevation terrain with brown colors. African easterly waves are frequently observed to originate from the Ethiopian highlands circled in this figure. Some easterly waves are also excited by terrain features in southern Chad and along the border with Cameroon and Nigeria. Easterly flow across the topography induces a vorticity region to form. The structure shown on the previous slide is advected westward and can be amplified by extracting energy uh, from the mean flow, which is discussed in the next module. Studies of the mean structure of African easterly waves extend back to the 1970s, such as the paper from which this figure was borrowed. This paper composited the features of African easterly waves by phase, which is denoted by the numbers right along this line here, which denotes the track of the average wave through space. All the lines in this bottom panel can be seen faintly in the background of the top panel if you look closely. The top panel shows the structure of the anomalous wave component of the winds at 700 millibars. Although the background wind is easterly, the anomalous portion associated with the wave shows pairs of positive and negative relative vorticity that are tilted toward the east with latitude, much like what we saw over the East Pacific. And this maximum in the vorticity, sort of the center of this wave, is located at around 10 or 11 degrees north. This paper also looked at the anomalous wave horizontal circulation at multiple levels in different phases of the easterly wave at a location relative to what they define as the disturbance center, which is denoted by a red plus symbol in each panel. And that's approximately that uh, location that I just pointed out at about 10 or 11 degrees north on the previous slide. Phase four on the x-axis is at that location on the previous slide. The y-axes show the latitude relative to the latitude of the wave disturbance center. So the zero latitude is about 10 or 11 degrees north. These figures show that vorticity is present up to at least 700 millibars, but it is at its maximum at 850 millibars, where a closed circulation might even develop. At 500 millibars, the flow is far less rotational and easterlies dominate along the wave trajectory and to its south. The proximity of the waves to the Sahara Desert in North Africa is both a reason for their maintenance, but can also be detrimental to their growth if dry Saharan air inhibits growth of deep convection. If we look in this inset panel here, dry desert air advected southward from the Sahara, which is at 15 to 20 degrees north, into the track of easterly waves closer to 10 north, can become entrained within convective regions in easterly waves after the air is advected further south and then comes embedded into the mean easterlies and invected out over the Atlantic. And when this entrainment could, might occur, this can prevent the easterly waves from developing into tropical cyclones, among other factors. The desert air is known as the Saharan air layer, or SAL, and is indicated in this figure by the yellow and orange colors that appear to be layered on top of the background, which denotes the sea surface temperature. In particularly strong easterlies, denoted by these uh, white arrows, which supposedly denote the African easterly jet and then the continuation of the flow into the Atlantic, the sound can be advected all the way to North America in, in some times. The dust carried in the sound is often seen in visible satellite imagery, and channels centered on water vapor absorption bands can, when combined, quantify the dryness of the air. These events are impacted by the strength and location of the African easterly jet, which we'll describe next. During the boreal summer, 
Surface temperature over the Sahara can routinely exceed 35 to 40 degrees C over here, around 15 to 20 north, and sea surface temperatures off the coast of western equatorial Africa at the same time are much cooler, up and around 25 degrees C. This sets up a large pressure gradient between the ocean and a surface heat low over the desert. However, the temperature profile over the desert follows a dry adiabat more closely than the marine atmosphere. Therefore, the temperature gradient is dramatically reduced at 700 millibars compared to low levels and is actually usually close to reversed by the time we get to 500 millibars. What we're seeing here is the contrast in the temperatures at 500 millibars illustrated. Combined, this causes a shallow large-scale sea breeze-like circulation or thermally direct circulation to develop in response. We can consider the development of the easterly jet if we consider the direction of the thermal wind vector given the low-level temperature gradient from the ocean to the land. Meridional or latitudinal cross-sections of wind, temperature, vorticity, and moisture have also been documented for easterly waves in Africa. If we first look at the zonal wind cross-sections relative to a reference latitude of 11 degrees north on the x-axis, we see that low-level westerlies, denoted by the shaded area, are present in the very lowest levels, consistent with Coriolis acting upon the low-level component of the pressure gradient-driven flow. Between 500 and 700 hectopascals, an easterly jet develops between the Sahara and the coast. This is required to maintain thermal wind balance. The maximum magnitude of the easterly jet on average is a little over 10 meters per second and is centered a little above 700 millibars in terms of the pressure level. Now this is a composite mean. This jet can meander to the north and the south. Also, its strength can change with time based on the contrast of temperature between the ocean and desert, which are implied by the bottom panel on this slide. That temperature difference is implied, I mean. The absolute vorticity of the flow generally increases with latitude as the Coriolis parameter increases. However, this is very important, a region exists where the meridional gradient is re reversed, and we'll discuss this in the next module. This region is shaded in this panel at the top and is approximately coincident with the location of the easterly jet. As we'll see in the next module, this reversal is a requirement for barotropic instability of the flow, which is related to one mechanism through which easterly waves may be amplified.